worry there. So let's see. I heard her a minute ago. It's not my TV. It looks like her mic symbol is not. So let me see if she's what texted is she me. Studying? She's going for economics and math. Mm -mm, just hand like that. I was reading with interest about the mobile gas station. <clears throat> Oh, one that was here last time. Yeah. Can you all hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah. Great, sorry. Uh, John Henke, Keith Dyer. Here. Gigi Debrecht. Here. Natalia Dukas. Here. Dustin Collum. Here. Patricia Lang. Michael Willoughby. Here. Mary J. Stephen Lemberg. Here. Ian Weinberg. Here. Okay. All right. So first up, historic design review for 163 West Maple. I appreciate your... Uh, oh, I apologize. Yeah, you're excited to get there, yeah. but yeah. So first up, approval of the minutes of April 19th, 2023. Is there a motion on that? I move we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 163 West Maple. You see in the front page, I'm requesting postponement on this. We had originally requested postponement to, to this date certain, thinking it would be enough time to get some revised drawings in that address the soffit over there at Seven Daughters. Uh, we were unable to meet, and I have not heard from them in a while, so I, I'm asking for postponement again. I think that at this point, oh, excuse me, we should probably, because we have some odd meetings, um, or lack of thereof, I should say, coming up. We should probably just go ahead and kick this all the way to July. Uh, if you're willing to do a date certain, that is. You could realistically table it. It's my preference that you do a date certain. Um, and that date would be July 5th. That's so, the day after the 4th of July, which I think is normally a holiday in the United States. I don't think so. I think the 4th of July is that one time. Keith, no Keith holidays are different holiday. than uh, the rest of us. <laughs> okay. I know that I, I won't be here on the 5th. All right. All right. Do you have any concerns about quorum? I mean, All right. That's a fire minor. All that's right. So, so that's, a fair, that's a fair statement. The next meeting Wednesday. would be the uh, 19th of July. Because I think that June 7th, our very next meeting, is actually too soon. And we also have the design guidelines that day. So I think then July 19th would be. I would so move. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, is the Sorry. business yeah. not open all this entire time? No, it's been closed for like, it seems like four Since or five years starts. now. Yeah, really yeah they, they were open for a brief period. It seemed like they were doing okay, and then they had some issues, and they just haven't been reopened. Um, it's just kind of been they are doing work inside right now. They have a permit for interior an interior renovation So that is moving along While they wait on this outside, so I mean I I, I would think that the business would want to open before I mean, July, are they but in, in a, a bigger hurry to get this resolved or not? They don't appear to be in my opinion. I would agree with Mike that if they were in a big hurry they would have Reached out. They would have been here a little bit better. Because so. what's the other option to not do a date certain? You could table it, and just for those of you that don't know, when you table it, I have to do noticing again, which isn't a huge deal, but it does cost money and it does take time. Mm -hmm. So I usually, when the the app is in, um, I give them a couple of tries, postpone to a couple of dates certain. If there's ever radio silence, that that's when I would ask you to table it, and we'll just deal with it later. But. Um, that's where we're at for that. So, so the, the best possible thing would be <clears throat> two weeks earlier, and it doesn't make sense to go through all the uncertainty for two weeks. Yep. Yep. Um, so there's that. Okay. So pre-application discussion? Yeah, and before we get there, I just kind of glossed over it, but just so you're all aware, so you can mark your calendars, I do have the uh, design guidelines plan for June 7th 
That would be deliverable number four, a.k.a. the final draft. They spent this time in putting all of our comments into it. Uh, we've spoken a couple of times just to clarify a few things, so it appears to me that they are on track. Um, at that point, we would be recommending, hopefully, approval to the City Commission, and we would take it there. They had mentioned at our last meeting that there's going to be an engagement opportunity after it's adopted. Basically, like a, a coming out party for our design guidelines, um, letting people know about them, how to use them. Um, they are fine doing that after their contract ends, which is in June. They they recognize it's a bit of a time crunch, and they don't mind. So, basically, um, I'm sort of begging you to. Uh, Carve out some time on June seventh to get as many of us here as we can, so that get as many of us here oh. um, to talk about it and to hopefully move it forward. And then I'll be taking it on from the city commission, and I'd update update you then. It would be nice once we approve it is to share it with the planning board. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Because if we're looking at guidelines for the buildings we're responsible for, and they're looking at theirs, and the two don't match up at all. Um, that makes yeah. no sense at all. Yeah, and they uh, know it's been going on, so it'd be, it would be a nice little uh, way to finish out that. I mean, it, rather than a true public engagement, I, I think that would be more beneficial to yeah. have them come in, you know, to discuss. Come in here? Well, I think the, us and the planning board having a joint meeting oh, with, with okay. the people that did the uh, guidelines oh. here. Okay. Possibly there to uh, walk through them. Okay, that's something to consider because I know uh, from talking to them, it did seem like their engagement would be at a meeting like this. So I meet with the planning board in early June or second week of June. So I should have enough time to set it up if they if they are amenable to it for some time in July. Well, I guess maybe a little different approach, whether they're amenable or not, we should invite them. And yeah. if they choose not to participate, that's their sure. decision. Sure. Okay, writing that down. All right. Great. So then we can move on to the pre app if you'd like. Um, You've seen in your materials some pretty preliminary drawings. Uh, we all know that Stem and Stone's been gone for a while. Uh, there's a new tenant that signed a lease here, uh, Rowan, the jewelry-based uh, st store. Uh, they do some piercings as well. Uh, the gist of it is they are doing some work to the storefront, but not a whole lot. What you're seeing pretty much right now is the removal of the awning, looks like a couple of uh, gooseneck light fixtures and then paint and that's really it a, a new sign as well uh, I've spent a lot of time with them kind of going back and forth with colors their original proposal was a uh, pink yep it's brand colors they're, they were kind of running through their whole palette of brand colors with me they settled on this and I um, was much more happy with this than pink it's neutral. It's, it's much more appropriate in the historical setting. Uh, we know that that part of the storefront isn't necessarily original, original, but it's uh, got its original characteristics. Uh, the removal of the awning is not a big deal. It's not an original awning. That building may have had awning at one point, but um, that can always be added on in the future. So what I'm asking you all with this is actually whether or not you feel as though you need to see this at a full historic design review or if you're comfortable with me handling this uh, administratively. Again, it's removing an awning and painting <coughs> and a new sign. Signs, uh, I should say, projecting in wall. I would be comfortable with you handling it unless that would set a precedent that would be undesirable. I don't feel that way. Okay. I think I've uh, treated these all pretty much the same. Whenever it's gray, I'll bring it and ask. So, 
Is there a preference for uh, like halo lighting instead of backlit lighting in the districts? Is that something to consider? Yeah, and uh, so it's actually required. So if you're going to have illumination, it has to be halo backlighting. Yeah, I saw, okay. Um, and that's what this appears to read to me: pin-mounted backlit channel letters. But but absolutely, it, it's either got to be that or uh, compatible light fixtures. So they'll meet all the codes and ordinances in that regard. Okay. Other comments? I'm also comfortable with the way that Nick described it, I think. I could go back to the pink if you'd like. Match well, if they want to go back to the pink, we'd like to see them here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And of course, uh, throughout, the, throughout the process, I'll make sure nothing else creeps up on us. And if things do, they'll, they'll be here. Mm -hmm. So um, if everyone's comfortable, I'll move forward then. Yeah. All right. I have two questions for you, though, yeah. related, sort of related. Yeah. Just look at the picture at Astrin's. Um, yeah. Given that he's retiring and I think selling the building, <clears throat> is there any chance, given that, you know, what we're trying to do in town that, that um, I don't know what to call it, canopy? Oh, oh boy. I know. Disappear? So there's a really good chance. Good. I could tell you that the prospective tenant will be removing it. My, my second question, and I'm all in favor of you approving this one administratively. I noticed in walking around town because it was so nice the other day, I saw several signs that seemed to have a lot of verbiage on them. And I, I thought we had talked as a group that we wanted signs that identified the business, but didn't talk about the fact they had, you know, tacos and bananas and, you know, whatever. And I noticed a couple of the signs that have gone up recently have a lot of verbiage. I was also surprised to see some of the signs have uh, backers that are, uh, one I saw in particular south of Lincoln at Woodward is uh, red, this red backer, which in effect, if you think about how we've defined what the size of the sign is, we said if the backer is so outstanding that you need to measure the whole backer as part right. of the sign. Right. And that's a small building, even on Woodward. So have we changed our philosophy on staff on what we're approving for signing? Can you tell me a little bit more about that last sign? I'm just curious. You said yeah, it's on, it's the second or third building south of Lincoln on Woodward. Is it the pizza? <coughs> yeah. Pizza place, I yeah. think? Yeah, I think I've seen that. Ooh, oh, fresh goodness? Yeah. So that sign I've asked them to take down about three times. And they, uh, it's currently a banner that's kind of just pinned up there. So that is not an approved sign. It was temporary for a, a, a moment. As you may or may not know, temporary signs can't be out for more than two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I, I apologize. I did not realize that it was temporary because no, I was yeah, looking at no. it from, you know, 100 yards away. That one is, was not approved. And I, I, we need to get on asking him again to take that down and get an appropriate sign up. So, so noted that that will be taken care of. He had it down for a while, but... Um, okay, so that's not a philosophy change in what we're... Nope, that's with. just someone doing something that wasn't approved. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And then, um, forgive me, what was your other question? Well, I just noticed there seems to be some new signs with rather <coughs> extraneous verbiage on them. So okay. window signage? Hmm? Window signage? No. Uh, is it Flaherty's or something like that on Woodward, South oh, of Maple? Flaherty's? Yeah. Yeah, it's got... Things. I mean, it's an attractive sign. It's nice, okay. but it's totally at odds with what we've in the past approved and discussed with petitioners, that there wasn't a need to put a lot of verbiage on these signs. Yeah, and if you recall, that sign was actually here for a, for a design review. So um, for lack of a better w way to say it, we, we had our chance then. The challenge that I'm seeing now is when we're getting these uh, these businesses in with their brands, and they're very much trying to match brand from city to city, um, increase brand recognition, not changing their signage or storefronts even, the entire storefronts, too much from city to city. Not that that's something we should be overly concerned about, but um, so in that case, that was actually here, so um, they happened to meet the square footage, and we didn't 
necessarily. I'm not sure if you were even here, but. No, obviously I wasn't here because I okay. didn't remember that. Okay. One. Yeah, that because they were doing a whole renovation, so they, they had to. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to take that back. I'm not sure that we, that I can recall any other signs that have excessive. I can send you pictures. Necessarily. I mean, I wasn't. It would be helpful okay. to know the examples sure. of what you're talking about. Okay. It would be. I'll do that. Okay. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Okay. So I kind of already went over the draft agenda for the 7th. Uh, I've exclusively got the design guidelines on there so we can have uh, unobstructed however long you need to take uh, crack at it. The only things I would add are more pre-application discussions if they were to come up. So um, you can expect a, a pretty simple as in one agenda item meeting on the 7th. And then you probably saw the, the list of demo, demolitions uh, this, excuse me, last month. Um, and nothing like hugely alarming, but there's some character going away. So um, we may be talking about that soon. But that any blue house. Does anybody know what the background of that house is? No, I wish I did. It's it's super strange. Is that that isn't one of the? I don't remember if they were called luxer houses or. Lustra. Right. Is that one of them? No, I don't okay. think so. So there's no concerns with that. Um, that's about that's about all I have for you. Mr. Koloff, so All right. if, unless there's any <clears throat> questions for me. Questions or comments or topics anybody wants? All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, start with roll call. Sorry. Oh. John Hankey. Sammy, you can come on up here if you want. Here. Jennifer and Ty Dukas. Here. Dustin Paul. Here. Patricia Lang. Julie Razorbeer. Michael Willoughby. Here. Samantha Capello. Wherever you want. <clears throat> and Lampier. Here. Thanks. All right, so first up, approval of the DRB minutes of May 3rd, 2023. We have a motion for that. Well, I wasn't here, so I don't want a motion for it. Who was here? Michael was here. I make the motion? No, oh, Michael can. I'll make a motion to yeah. approve uh, minutes. Can I second it too? <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll oh, second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I cannot get to the. DRB. All against? Anybody against? All right. There. Right. So when I go Ready? there, you click on so, You've got this window up, you're going to have to cancel. Ah, uh, that's, that's the culprit. Stuff. Thank you. All right, so first, sign reviews for. 34040 Woodward Community Unity Bank. Sorry, Leah, now I know what you're saying. I was apologizing to you. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to you then. Stealing your agenda and putting it there. Okay, so 34040 Woodward Community Unity Bank. We're here for a, um, a sign review um, for an application for a new sign and some associated facade changes on an existing one-story commercial building in the B2 general business and MU5 triangle district overlay zoning districts. You'll recall that on December 7th, 2022, 
we reviewed um, this application. Um, it was a little bit different, and um, at that time, Design Review Board members had requested that the applicant return with a rendering of the full building facade and postpone making a decision on the application to January 4th. Um, on January 4th, we came back and we reviewed a revised sign and facade changes. Um, there was not a lot of change at that meeting, but there was a, an elevation of the full building facade, and board members at that time felt that the facade and screening, the facade screening and supports were sort of too tall for the building, and um, suggestions were made to reduce the height by about one third, and the decision was. Uh, postponed again at that time for the applicant to return with a complete revised design. So here we are tonight. We're now looking at a kind of a different um, look for the facade element. Um, we're looking at a new facade element here made of reclaimed wood. And then there is one sign proposed as part of the design review submitted. Um, it contains internally lit letters um, with colors as shown on the sign plans provided. Um, the letters would be mounted to the wood panel mounted on the building facade and the sign itself is in name letter style and it's 48.47 square feet. It's mounted in the sign band. So the proposed sign meets the ordinance for combined sign allowance and placement. And then as far as lighting, the applicant has proposed new light fixtures on the building and the new light fixtures are proposed to be mounted six feet from grade and would project four inches from the wall according to the spec sheet provided. Um, so due to the location and low output of the fixtures proposed, the planning division did not yet seek a photometric plan as part of the design review application requirements. Um, and then additionally, Article 4, Section 4.21D requires all luminaries to be full cut off or cut off as defined in section 9.02 and positioned in a manner that does not unreasonably invade abutting or adjacent properties. Exception to cut off luminaries can be made at the discretion of the design review board under any of um, six conditions listed in the packet. Um, and so thus the, the design review board should discuss the proposed fixtures in regards to the six conditions listed and determine if a, an exception will be granted. Um, so the applicant uh, did revise, did submit revised plans to show the height from grade for the light <coughs> fixtures as noted in the packet. So those were included um, and that condition was removed. So based on the requirements of Article 7, Section 7.09, the planning division recommends that the, the design review board approve the design review application for 34040 Woodward Community Unity Bank um, with one uh, condition, and, that, and that's if the design review board approves the non-cutoff light fixtures pursuant to Article 4, Section 4.21D of the Zoning Ordinance. And I will do my best to answer any questions that you have, and I know that the applicant has a representative here as well to speak on behalf of their design. Thank you. Go ahead, Nick. Leah, can you remind <clears throat> us, the first iteration of these plans, the sign was something like 80, 80 plus square feet, is that correct? It was much larger. Um, so the, the, um, the allowable combined sign area for the tenant is 80.25 square feet and uh, the last iteration iteration was still below that, but much closer. So I don't know the exact number. No, that's fine. I think it was right around 80. And yeah. I just wanted to ask that for a little bit of perspective. So okay. not only did the architecture element shrink a lot, but the signage shrank by half. Sure, yeah. Which is good. Thank you. So any comments from the commission on this? I know there was a lot of discussion last time. Um, <clears throat> I think... The signage is fine in my mind, and it meets the ordinance, and I think the size is fine. I'm just not sure about the wood backer that's there. Um, why we'd want to approve that, and I guess I'm asking that for two reasons. One, it is above the height still of the building, and I know, Michael, we've talked about what was there previously and bringing it down, which they did too. Mm -hmm. But sitting at the stoplight going east and looking at the building, this is... 
in effect creating almost a new sign ban for the building, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If the sign was just on the building without that wooden backer, you know, I'd certainly approve it instantaneously. I just don't think that it needs that backer. And I, I appreciate knowing now it's it's wood. I sort of missed that. I thought we had a colored backer. So. I guess I personally do not view the wood as a sign, as a backer to the sign. In this particular case, I view it as a feature of the building, personally. And I am much more satisfied with this design than the do mesh. <coughs> six foot yeah, and I guess... Just to be clear, um, the interpretation that staff was making here was that uh, the wood element was not signage, that was a facade element, and so that was um, separate. Will it be stained? I would probably ask the applicant to let us know. At the mic too, Dorian, if you wouldn't mind, thank you. And a little introduction when you get here. For those that don't know you, yes. I am Dorian Moore, Vice President of Archive Design Studio, and we're the architects on the project. And I brought with me a, a sample of the reclaimed wood, if anyone wants to take a look at it. Um, and so it's a, it, it'll be a finished and coated product um, where the, the, um, <laughs> the letters will be mounted to. So this is this is the stain color that you're yes. proposing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I would agree with Natalia. You know, it's leading into the Triangle District as well, which I think this is in character with like a hunk of wood. What the Triangle District <laughs> is going for. So oh, I, I think I personally have less of an issue with it. Yeah, I don't have any issue at all. Well, we can pass it that way. Why can't we get photometrics of the lights? Um, we, uh, so I just simply didn't ask for them when I looked at the uh, spec sheet for the wattage of the three lights proposed. It was uh, a very low output, so we didn't um, see the need. And then when um, these are the same lights that were brought at the last, uh, I believe they've been on this the entire time. So I did bring that up at the last couple, and the, the board also didn't request the photometric, so we didn't ask for it. I think the fixtures are handsome. Mm -hmm. It will add to the quality of the building facade. Um, I, I appreciate the fact you brought that sample, because just looking at this, and I wanted to make sure I didn't miss your notes. Yep. Um, I think if we approve this, I think you need to explain what the stain is. Not that I'm sure you stain it red or anything else, mm -hmm. but it would be nice to know, the, you know the, what the, the stain product is. And we can get that yeah. for you, no problem. My do you think? Oh, oh, sorry, but my only is concern is <coughs> maintenance. Like, was there a plan for maintenance? Stained wood, since, especially since it's not protected by anything. I yes, there is. According to you know the the maker and the the coating that to use it it's will probably need maintenance every eight to ten years so there is a protective coating on it to protect it from the sun the rays of the sun because it's facing south and west I do think going back to the lights just looking at the but it's showing that the output is up to 900 lumens which I think it's pretty bright. It's a, It's actually not. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised. 900 seems yeah. like a big number, but we're dealing with lumens in the 27. Yeah, 000. I was going to say 20, 2,400 is Like is the one uh, right. back over by you? Yeah. You're, we're what talking in the tens at? of thousands okay. of lumens. So 900 is actually quite dim. Mm -hmm. All right, I was going to ask about that. Other questions or comments? Somebody ready to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I will motion that we approve the design review application for 
34040 Woodward Community Unity Bank uh, with the following condition. The Design Review Board approves the non-cutoff light fixtures pursuant to Article 4, Section 4.21D of the Zoning Ordinance. Thank you for writing that out. Hmm. Do we have a second? second? Any comments on the motion? Any public comments or confirm first? I don't see any public on the okay. one. I know they're there for a different. Uh, all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the second? Uh, Michael. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thanks for the patience as I learn here. All right, so next up we have 220 Park. The Clark Hill property is back. All right. So for this one, um, if you don't mind, and I'm sure you won't, I'm going to focus on like two or three highlights of the project because we've seen this like three times uh, already and just get to the get to the meat and potatoes. So this was very recently approved for a master sign plan. Uh, I left all the information about the other signs in here just for some uh, perspective, I guess, or um, just, to, just to have it for uh, posterity, maybe. So back when we did that review, we made it very clear that building identification signs can't be illuminated. They understood, hence them being here today. The gist of the proposal is um, they're bringing back the two Clark Hill signs, one on Woodward, one on Hamilton, uh, Hamilton Row, um, proposing illumination. The uh, square footage is exactly the same as was approved in the master sign plan. The location is exactly as approved in the master sign plan. So really the crux of the issue here is the illumination. And uh, to quote the actual rule, the operative word, uh, the operative phrase here, is it does not permit or it permits non-illuminated signs identifying the structure. So we all agreed at that master sign plan uh, level that these were appropriate as building identification signs. Now they want to pursue the the, uh, the lighting aspect of it. So they would need a, a 36.7 square foot dimensional variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And you'll see in my recommendation that that is uh, one of the conditions, the other being there was just a small quirk in the sign plans, just uh, I'll call it just a simple innocent oversight with one of the signs that they have since corrected. I'll show you just so that uh, we can be abundantly clear. You'll see here at the bottom right of page 22 of the PDF, the 220 park still located up at the top. That was removed, or excuse me, relocated down here uh, in the master sign plan. I've asked them to adjust that. So they have, I have the plans in hand, um, but for, uh, for tonight, since you haven't seen them, I would still recommend uh, assigning that condition just for, for the record, and then I'll make sure they, they follow through um, with, the, with the hard copy set. So if you have any questions, of course, I'll answer them. The applicant team is here as well for any additional questions. Um, I wanted to also let you know, um, in recent memory, I know of two building identification signs that were approved for variances for illumination. One, well, technically three actually, two were on the same building. One was Triple Nickel and Birmingham Pub. Specifically, the Woodward facing sign was approved for illumination as a building identification sign. More recently, the RH development was approved for illuminated building identification signs. Uh, three. Uh, excuse me, four of them, one on each side of the building. So there's some uh, some precedent here behind our recommendation to approve, um, especially the Woodward side. Uh, we we recognize Woodward's a kind of a tough thoroughfare. So uh, apparently the BZA has as well. So, yes. Uh, remind, I, I believe also the powerhouse gym. But I remember all of those had to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. They absolutely still have to, and they actually have their application in already to do so. They are required, though, to get a recommendation, or excuse me, a, a decision from the Design Review Board first. So Powerhouse, I've only been here for six years. I think that sign's been around for, like, almost ever. So you may very well be correct. 
Not not ever. Not ever. I know Matt Baca did it, so it wasn't like forever ever. Right. But um, after tw sometime after 2012, because that's when Matt started. So in the I, last I 10 years. I remember that the yeah. powerhouse gym discussion. I'm not trying to age you or. or but you are. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I was very young then. <laughs> whatever you say, uh, you're still very young. So, um, any other questions? Again, I'm happy to answer. Unless you don't even have any questions. Are there comments from anybody? I guess my comment is: Are we basically now illuminating every sign on Woodward? <coughs> Identification signs specifically. Yeah. Um, so most regular signs are, I would say, and besides the powerhouse, Birmingham pub, I can't think of another one, but that's not because they're not there. I just don't know. If I can't think of another one either, but it seems like we're going down the road where you're going to drive down Woodward and we have like all these illuminated building signs, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think you could say there's a trend happening. What's, what is going to be the, the logic of going to the BZA? What's the hardship? Well, I guess I'd let them explain. Um, I haven't quite read their letter yet. Um, it's their burden, I'll say, to prove a hardship. So I, I, I might, if they'd like to give you some insight into it, That'd be good. So whoever would like to, yeah. And if you could introduce yourself when you get up to the mic, that would be awesome. Certainly. My name's Dan Minkus. I'm the managing partner of the Birmingham office of Clark Hill. And uh, thank you for, for having us and listening to us tonight. As far as the hardship is concerned, um, and it is more fully explained in our letter to the ZBA, um, we will have visitors coming to us. We are changing a location. We've been Birmingham residents for, I've been with the firm 37 years, and we've been in Birmingham all that time. We were at uh, 255 South Woodward for 22 years. We are now at 151 South Woodward. We've been there 17 years. We're very much interested in being part of the Birmingham fabric, and we believe we are. Uh, we are now going to be moving to a location that's not on Woodward for the first time in 35 years, and we want to make sure that our people who come to visit us are going to be able to find us and that they are going to recognize and associate us with the city of Birmingham. We do have visitors that come to us before sunup. We do have visitors who come and visit us, and we have depositions and other items that go past sundown. Not so much this time of year, fortunately, but certainly in the winter months. Uh, we also believe that traffic coming northbound, southbound, eastbound, westbound at Maple and Woodward, if they will be able to see that location, it will save people from confusion and make it easier for them to find us. Uh, we, we don't believe that it is, well, I shouldn't say we don't believe it is. We think the sign is very classy. We think the sign is, is tasteful. And uh, we, it's already been approved, but we would like to have it illuminated so that it will have greater visibility. It's not near any particular residential locations. And uh, for those reasons, we would ask that, that this uh, board, as well as in a couple of weeks, we'll ask the ZBA um, to approve our request. I apologize if I missed it, but how are you proposing to light it again? It's backlit. <clears throat> um, the letters are about three and a half inches away from the wall. So even though that looks like a big black square, it's only the, the outline of Clark Hill and our logo that will be illuminated. So these are LEDs here. They'll shine back at the wall and create that halo. I think what I'm struggling with is that the hardship is created by having this be a building sign, but there's also precedent to illuminate building signs. Yeah, and just a, a bit of a, a, a point of order, not that you can't consider what he's said in his uh, statements there, but we are focused and our tools are the design review standards. Uh, we would let the BZA worry about the hardship portion of this. Uh, and again, it's not, it wasn't that it wasn't a question worth asking, but 
um, we should start or focus mostly on those design review standards and, and those are in the report if you need a, to read a little bit about them. So could you clarify again what we're voting on or would vote on? You're voting on whether or not to approve the illumination. Um, if you were to vote to approve, the condition would be that they get a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. You could, I guess, uh, reasonably postpone if you didn't feel like you had enough information. You could also uh, reasonably deny the request, which they could still take to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, it, it's up to you all. Okay. That sort of clarifies. I, you know, it, it bothers me just as an aside when we talk about precedent because whenever someone comes in and says, well, this isn't precedent setting, you know, if you approve it, here's my issue, yada, yada, and we go, okay, we agree, go ahead. And then, you know, two months later, somebody comes in and says, oh, look at the precedent that you guys established. You did that. Um, I have no problem if the BZA accepts your rationale and, and lights it. I, I feel very awkward us saying we approve it when we generally haven't approved these things in the past. Now, I think this is tastefully done. I think it'll look fine. I, I don't have an issue with that. It's, you know, if, if we're going to open it up and say, you know, this is now the norm, that's a totally different issue. But I don't think we're doing that. So I'm trying to understand how we can be supportive of this, but on the other <coughs> hand, not vote for something that we probably shouldn't vote for. Yeah, and maybe if I can restate a little bit, so you'd technically be voting to approve something that you don't have the power to approve. We don't have the power, uh, like the BZA does, to approve illumination where it's not permitted. That's where the condition comes in. So if they do not receive a variance, their approval here is nullified because they did not receive a variance. And we do this um, pretty commonly in a lot of, uh, of reviews. Not as much here because it's usually simpler here, but at the planning board we do uh, a lot of conditions like this. So um, basically if you can, you'd have to separate the two, I guess, and you'd have to look at the design review standards, say, hey, is the scale and the texture and the materials appropriate? Hey, will this be, uh, will this adversely impact my, their neighbors? Hey, um, is it consistent with our master plans? If you think yes, then your rationale for approving, in my opinion, would be sound. If you think no, then the opposite would be true. Well, it seems like they have met all the criteria of the design review um, requirements, save for the illumination, and I, it strikes me that we could support this, <coughs> uh, but not with a, not necessarily with a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but just support it with the understanding that it's conditional on uh, getting the variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is that, that is their lane that they travel in. Ours is over here. Yeah. And it strikes me that aside from the illumination aspect that doesn't meet the city's ordinance, it, it looks great. So that's kind of where I said I don't think we're establishing precedent. I think it's the Zoning Board of Appeals that's establishing precedent. No. But I wouldn't say I wouldn't say in the motion that we would recommend that they do it. I would just say it's contingent on them doing it. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how we could word a motion kind of for the reason you're saying is we, we can't approve it because it's as odds with the ordinance. No, we, we, we can approve the design review. With everything but the issues. lighting. Well, that's where the condition if, comes in. Yeah. And so that's why they have to go to the zoning board. It's not like, it's not like we're changing precedent here at all. Well, it's, well, in effect, what you're saying is the motion should say we approve the design is submitted except for the lighting, and it, the lighting needs and to and be... And therefore, they have to go to the zone board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we approve the, the scale, the texture, the color, right? all of those elements. Because those are within our lane. Right. The, the, yeah, that's, our, that's staying in our lane. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. 
And you could say, and I didn't include this in the approval language or the recommended language, that sometimes we'll say uh, approves with the condition that the applicant submit revised plans with no illumination or get a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. So yeah, you're, yeah, so you're suggesting that point. in that sort of language, you're suggesting that you recognize that it's not permitted and it's not your authority to approve such a thing. Right. So you're asking for either revised plans or go get a variance. No, I, I think that's a good middle ground because, uh, Dan, I really appreciate what you guys are trying to do. And you're right, it's going to be easier for people to see where you are. And I, I think it's appropriate. It meets all the requirements. It's just at odds with the ordinance. So, yep. therefore, I, I think for us to say we approve it is not uh, appropriate. So I like what you just said. Yeah, that's kind of a different different slant and a different <coughs> emphasis on the approval, which I think is good. If you remember it, you can make that motion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do we do that? So it'd be everything <coughs> as is except for in condition number one, you'd say to start, the applicant must submit revised sign plans with no illumination on the building identification sign, or the applicant must obtain a variance for 36.7 and so on. Yeah. Okay, that would be my motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any comments on the motion? Or public comment? You might want to do those before we vote. But I'm, I'm getting it down slow. <laughs> I don't see any public yeah. comment right. on Zoom. <laughs> all right, thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, we should do all in favor, uh, if you don't mind. Oh, we did, we did. Yeah, we did. Maybe good. we should keep take a nap or something. Right? Yeah, we're all good. Good to go. Thanks. If you need anything else, let me know, but we're we're on track so far. Appreciate it. Thanks so, so much. The next step then is just to go to ZBA meeting. The ZBA. That's right. right. Yep, that's right. Okay. So, Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, something Appreciate like that. Thank you. What I liked about the, that conclusion was that we're not in a position where we're recommending that this Yes. BZA or ZBA, I never mm -hmm. know what the order they're in. BZA. Uh, uh, is, we're not, we're not sort of promoting anything. Yeah, sometimes we really do like it and yeah. we'll try to promote it. Yeah. And that's, I think the language that we use this time is much more appropriate than I saying, agree. you know, I think that's a good compromise and it, it keeps us in our lane. I like right. that. Yeah, I agree. So I'll remember that for future instances. I think that, yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. But I do okay. agree there are times where we, we don't want that language and want to show our support. Right. I can think of a few. And we usually should be neutral on things that we're not against. <laughs> not for. Not, yeah. not uh, authorized to, to decide. Yep. And it depends. Usually the Board of Zoning Appeals likes to have your opinion, so they'll have the minutes to this meeting available to them. But the way you've spoken tonight about, you know, the standards, what you think it meets, those are all good things. Um, yeah. Keeping it less subjective right. is always good, as you did tonight. So, like Keith, you said, yeah, I do think that it will help visibility, and I do think that the Woodward issue is different. So, And, and if you remember, at times we've gone around the room uh, yeah. to solicit individual opinions so those could get in the minutes, so the BZA could look at the minutes and see what the individual feelings were yep. about it. Exactly. Speaking of BZA, did they approve the Comerica Bank metal? Construction? Yes, they did. Okay. And um, along the same lines, you all remember 185 Oakland, the Balfour building? I'm not sure. I don't recall who all was there. Um, so they did not approve the variance outright. They postponed it. Uh, it was for glazing on the first floor. Basically, they asked them to adjust their design to get a little bit closer to what the existing conditions were so that their variance request wasn't so high and that they'd be more amenable to that. So that it's looking good. You don't know until it happens, but that one's also still on the dock and it's tracking. But Comerica was, seemed pretty easy. Okay. All right, draft agenda for June 7th. It looks like zip. Uh, mm -hmm. Leah, do you know of anything? I thought we, uh, yeah, we we sold oh. the um, mobile. 
Oh they yeah, we totally did that. They could come back on June 7th, and um, as far as I know, that's the plan, but they'll let me know if, you know, if they're not able, they're doing a photometric and all that, so if for some reason Great. the timing doesn't work, but the that's, plan is the 7th. That's why I bring her, y'all, because I can't remember anything. So Keith, I know you're chomping at the bit for that, so if you'll be around June 7th. Yeah. yeah we, need, we need you that day. <laughs> We only drive by that, what, three times a day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of driving by things, uh, oh, uh -oh. your comments, um, the dealership in Adams Square, when that was approved, mm -hmm. um, I believe it was contingent on them not storing cars there. <laughs> um, I've counted 47 the other day <laughs> when I drove by after hours. In the lot or? In, in the lot. The in front of, well, you can't get that many in the building, but you can in the lot. And they obviously are doing a rather good business, a lot of different brands. But uh, now it almost appears they're using it as a storage lot. So from what I recall and from what I was told, that that's owned by like the Lavery Auto Group. Right. And that they were told they can't store new merchandise there like uh Audis from their lot or excess Audis. Well, that's true. They're not, they are not new cars. Yeah, so I'm not sure. And maybe they have a used business as well, so it, that could still apply if that car is for sale. Uh, and from what I understand, if a car has a license plate on it, it doesn't really count as, like, inventory or whatnot. So they may... I know that our code enforcement has been there a lot because we, uh, we hear from neighbors um, frequently about that. So they're very familiar. I can uh, broach the subject again and ask them to take a look again. Well, but, it, uh, what sort of jumps out is when you realize he's there, next to him is the right aid that's gone. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no business there. Ah. And then just north of I them are um, varsity shop. Varsity yeah. shop, yeah. Which, I mean, that's a destination. People come and go. They don't park over the weekend. Yeah. Well, they might in order to get in the door. But, <laughs> Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't quite understand why there's so many cars there. Okay. Other comments? Nope, and I don't have anything else for you all, unless you have more comments for me. All right. What's I'm the bad. status of historic designation of homes? Uh, uh, maybe a particular home? Perhaps. <laughs> my, uh, my group is uh, doing pretty well on the research that I asked them to do. We weren't quite ready. If, if, if you recall, we were planning on it like late April, and it just I didn't get enough by then. But I'm starting to get enough, so uh, I have to reach out to a few of them to get their homework still. And then once that's set, I think we're uh, once that preliminary report's done, it's going to go like real fast, 100 miles an hour. Great. And I guess at at a certain point, because you know I have to send it to the shipo as well. Uh, it depends on how quickly they review it. Just checking. Yep. It's all it's all moving. It's all a moving. But I think I do recall you had asked by the summer. You <laughs> made a quip about uh, my what, birthday. The summer. Oh, what's your birthday? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, next February for sure. Are you going to host a barbecue for everybody yeah. once it goes through? <laughs> we'll do a remote meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dustin's bringing the potato salad. Yep. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Aye.